probably can't tell from, you won't tell the whole time I'm in Huntsville, uh, but you know, playing tonight, I'll do something tomorrow, but I'm really shy about my fiddling. I started in my mid-20s uh, living outside Chapel Hill, North Carolina. I had a housemate who was a banjo player. He's like Jerry, but different. And like Jerry, is a really good banjo player. And his friends, they had parties. And uh, the people were good 30 years ago when I was living in that house, and they're good now. And one guy at the end of a party left... He wasn't so good. He left his fiddle. He said, I'm not going to play anymore. Do you know anybody wants to buy it for $100, fiddle, bow, and case? And uh, I bought that fiddle. And uh, my housemate, when I started playing, he said, Ken, you're scaring the cats. Quit scaring the cats. Put that thing away. And, you know, I both heard it, but I was stubborn. I kept at it. But... When I, I, but what I mean is I was, I've always been shy about my fiddling because I've always been around people who are really, really fine. Like where I've met Jean and Mary Nell is at a festival in West Virginia, the Appalachian String Band Festival, known as Clifftop. And I know that I am pedestrian. I've been playing 30 years. I'm pedestrian. But I lived in Fairbanks, Alaska. I lived in Juneau. I lived in Sitka. And I was a college professor in Nome was great for my fiddling because I was the best for a thousand miles. <laughs> it's good for my confidence. And I taught over telephone and I traveled to villages. And every village had a school. And every school had a principal's office. And I would knock on the door because I would be in the village anyway to meet my college students. I'd say, can I come in and play fiddle and do writing with the kids? And uh, they'd always say, yeah. It's like we're here, and even being in Huntsville, even Keith are on tour. I was on tour. I knew I was going to be at Texas A&M. Jerry and Beth are in Austin. It's complicated getting us all here. Getting to some of those far villages was impossible. And here I am just showing up. Can I come in and play some fiddle and do riding with the kids? And every place they'd go, yeah. And at the end, there's a... A little, this is the map of Alaska once again, and there's a little island over there. I will show, this is St. Lawrence Island, and this is a place called Gamble, 40 miles to Siberia. And when I was in Gamble, at the elementary school where I had my college student I would meet later in the day, the third, fourth grade teacher said, you know, the kids had never seen a violin before. So in Nome, which is, once again, Nome is here, so Fairbanks, where the heart is, is here. Here's Nome, Anchorage, Juneau, Sitka. It's a big state. Once again, double the size of Texas with 700,000. Like about the population of Fort Worth would double the size of Texas. So, uh, but anyway, that, that third, fourth grade teacher in Gamble said, you know, the kids had never seen a violin before. So I went from Nome being best for a thousand miles with one plane ride kind of making history with this. And I'm going to do, I'll just do a poem. I've got to find the book. I didn't know I was going to do this one, but I'm going to do it. And then get in D. So. And I'll just do this and then I'll get those guys back. It's my favorite poem. If I'm ever asked what my favorite is, but then I'll change it. I'll say, well, my favorite. But this is kind of like my favorite favorite. I don't do it that often. It's called Village Fiddle. And it's about the fiddle over there that I would take to the village. I toted in my junker, side seam already cracked, an old cheap box of wood that would take the steep banks of small planes aiming for runways. The bumps and jostles of sleds hooked to snow machines, the ice, the wind, nights in the villages. Higher education missionary made rounds of students' homes where I visited but never fit. To liaisons' offices where the state issued equipment sometimes worked, to local high schools and elementaries where I volunteered service, fiddle closer to my heart than the backpack full of books. Indeed, fiddle closer to my heart than the frozen, broken truth. Bloody pump, bare in utter darkness. Quick to unsnap the case, I scratched tunes where no one had played real life old time music to Eskimos and the odd whites in that weathered land. The pied fiddler I might have been, gently placing the beat up instrument in others' hands, giving up the bow. Good for smiles and laughs, random questions and comments. A third grader, 
It must be like having a dog always making noise. You must never get lonely. A high schooler, is it hard to learn? One of my college students, why are you out here? Where is your family? So I wrote that about being in far places. And then I would go back to these villages and I would, these kids in rural places are kids that do not test well. They're English in that, in St. Lawrence Island, English is second language, Siberian Yupik. There's only two places in the United States, the two villages on that island, Savunga and Gamble, where Siberian Yupik is spoken. That's their first language. And I would go back to Gamble and I would uh, go back to those classes and say, what do you remember? And these kids, I'm just gonna, they don't test well, but they're as smart as the kids here, they're smart as kids. I go to prep schools, there's these kids, they're as smart as those kids. They just don't test well. They'd say, say, what do you remember? They say, I know you, you never shave. <laughs> or what I learned, I learned more than by listening than the teachers knew. They say, oh, He's back, Chong. And this is the far end of the world, but their Cheech and Chong are real big, and there is a drug <laughs> culture. And anybody who's not Eskimo with beard and glasses, they're Chong. So he's back, Chong. Or they go, oh, I know you. You're the poet guy. I still got my bookmarks and cards. And, and Evie and Keith got, they got CDs, they got DVDs, I got books and CDs, but I also got, and they got their business cards, I got free poem postcards. I always got stuff I give to kids. I know you, you're the poet guy, I still got my poem. Or they go, you're the fiddle guy, play the cat song. So for the kids who are still here, uh, this is what I would do with the kids, they would remember this. We all have friends in Seattle, uh, couple guys, Jerry and Greg Canote, and Jerry Canote made up a fiddle tune for his cat named Sadie. So I would play this and I would put the appropriate cat sounds in. So I'm going to play this and then I'll let Evie and Keith get back on here. So uh, Sadie at the back door.